Hey, my name is Ken Finnan, and I'm from Capital Advantage Tutoring, and my job is to help you pass the SAE exam, the Series 7 exam, the Series 6, 63, 65, and 66 exam. Um, I also have a little crappy podcast called Blue Collar Finance. It's still not so great, but we're working on it. Um, so when securities are sold to the public, for the most part, they're registered. Well, I'm not saying for the most part, but the ones we know are registered under the Act of 33 with SEC. But actually, almost two times as many securities are not registered. They're private placements, Reg A, 147, Reg A, some sort of unregistered security. And that's kind of where we're leaning toward now. And in reality, we're actually leaning more toward what they call Reg D, private placement. So if that's $3 trillion worth of securities that are unregistered, Reg D is almost $2, million, $2 trillion of that. So most, most, the most popular way, if you want to say, of issuing a security to raise money is Reg D. And that's, we're not talking about Reg D here, but we are going to be talking about who can buy them. So if you register your securities, fully registered, you know, you're going to go public and everyone knows your name and on the exchanges or whatever it is, um, anyone can buy. That's not a problem. That's anyone can buy, you, me, my cousin, my daughter, whatever. Okay, as long as they're 18, if not, they have a custodian account. But, um, we're talking about Reg D here. So Reg D has limits on who can buy, like accredited versus non-accredited. So that's what we're going to talk about. So accredited investors, it used to be, the old rule used to be, you had to be rich, which we're going to get into, sophisticated and rich. You know, you're walking around with a tuxedo and a long cigarette holder. So, sorry, bad joke, but sophisticated means you understand the risks and rewards and stuff like that. So... Accredited used to be this, and it hasn't changed. They just expanded it, okay? So accredited is you either have a million net worth between you and your husband, you and your husband or wife, um, not including your current house, but I've never seen a question where they go that deep. Or you have 200 grand a year salary if you're single or 300 grand a year salary if you're miserable, I mean married. So again, one, two, three accredited. Remember that, 1 million, 200, 300. One, two, three accredited. Let's add a couple more to that, but that's the basics. Um, you can add if you're if you're an officer of the issuer, yeah, you're accredited. Like if you're an officer of the issuer sh issuing these private placement things, yeah, you should be accredited because you know what you're doing. Um, also, if you're an institution with over 5 million other assets, that's going to be an accredited also. So now it's easy. So that means you can buy on Reg D and we'll talk about that in a second. But what they did was they added in just the other week in the middle of 2020, end of August, the SEC came out and expanded it. So, so they're going to allow knowledge to be not just money. So you can't just be rich guys. You're, they're allowing knowledge to help you. So if you have a professional designation, which we're all going for, if you have the Series 7, the Series 65, or the 82 right now, they may add more. But if you have, if you've passed and have the Series 7, the Series 65, or the Series 82, which is private placement, registered rep, you are now considered accredited. They also add if, we, if a private fund is issuing, then knowledgeable employees. It doesn't have to be an officer, just employees who know their stuff, which is kind of, okay. They've also include all foreign governmental bodies, like tribes and governments and all that stuff, okay? Um, if you have a family office, more than 5 million. And here's another one, a spousal equivalent. So let's say you're not married and you're living with someone, okay? Um, not your roommate, I'm saying actually living in a relationship. That's called a spousal equivalent. So they're not making you be married. Like it used to be, you, if you, two people live together, they couldn't pool their resources to be accredited. Now they can. So if not, again, not roommates, not your best friend from college, unless. Um, so the point is, if you're living with someone and you haven't, you're either engaged or just what the equivalent, cohabitating is the word, the equivalent of being married, you can pool your resources to push yourself up to the, the accredited part. That's the new rules. It's not a big deal. It's not even adding a ton of new people, but it is adding stuff on. So accredited investors, remember one, two, three accredited. One million net worth, 200 salary or 300 salary free joint or an institution with 5 million and then they add it and that's good. And that's probably where the exam is now, but over the next few months, they're gonna start weeding in these new rules. So again, if you see person as a series 7, 65 or 82, or they call a knowledgeable employee or a foreign government, including Indian tribes and stuff like that, family office, 
of five million or more or a spousal equivalent, all of those have been added to the definition of an accredited investor. Now, since I'm on a roll, let's talk about this for a second. So if you are issuing under what they call regulation D, D is a private placement, a little bonus at the end of accredited to make you watch the end, okay? So Reg D is a private placement. And like I said, most, most securities are issued under Reg D. It's the most popular because you can raise an almost unlimited amount of money, but let's fix that, okay? So let's do this. So if you, under Reg D, it's a private placement, you're selling it to rich guys, okay? Rich guys and girls, okay? So now, under Reg D, we have technically three subsections. We have 504, okay? So 504 is about the money. So if you're gonna raise $5 million or less every year, then um, <clears throat> and la then you can basically use Reg D 504. The thing is, anyone can buy this. So there's no accredited or non-accredited, okay? Now, that works. So there's no really restriction on who can buy or whatever it is, but they do have to deal with state rules because it's a smaller issue, okay? Now, if you're going to raise more than $5 million, or let's say you want to have a little more stuff, okay? So it doesn't, you could actually technically do a 506 with 3 million, but we just think of it as anything over 5 million, you do 506. Now 506 is five, is up to no limit, no limit at all, but you cannot advertise, okay? But here's where the accredited comes in. You can raise as much as you want and you can have an unlimited number of accredited investors or rich people, but only up to 35 non-accredited, as long as you're sophisticated you know, the tuxedo. Um, so unlimited number of accredited and only up to 35 non-accredited, but you can't advertise. And you are listed, you are limited to registering with the state. You will have to absolutely have to register with each state as it's registered. Okay. 506C is the big boys, right? This is the one that if you're going to raise a lot of money and you really want to have restrictions on it and not deal with um, the states. So 506C, a only accredited investors, so no non-accredited. So the accredited list we just did matters, okay? So 506B, it matters too because it's up to 35 non-accredited. Everyone else has to be accredited. 506C is going to say, I'm going to raise as much as I want, but I am not going to allow non-accredited. Everyone who invests has to be accredited. And then because I'm doing that and only really rich people doing it or sophisticated, I don't have to register it in the states. I don't have to follow blue sky laws or states. And I can advertise. As long as all my investors are accredited, I can advertise. Because their idea is that even if little grandma or grandpa doesn't have a lot of money and she wants to buy on it, she couldn't. So even if she saw it and was like, ooh, I want to buy it, she can't. Okay? And for the most part, in all of Reg D, okay, all of Reg D, you have to – um hold it for six months fully paid. So usually when you fill out a Reg D, when you buy one, you have to fill out a PPM or investment letter. And it's basically gonna say on that letter, I know it's risky, because it is risky, and I know I can't sell it right away, okay? And the reason they're making you hold it under 144, which will be a later, later thing, the reason they're making you hold it is so that you don't resell it to an unsuspecting person. And I guess their idea is that the first six months is your riskiest time, so you have to hold it during that time so then you're taking the risk because you've done it. Okay, guys, that's it. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Share it. Tell people what I'm doing. I'm just trying to help out. Um, if you if you do want materials, in my in my descriptions, I have a link to a STC where you can go on a website and you can get um, a 15% discount, which is saving money is saving money. Or you can go to Achievable and you can buy SIE or Series 7 stuff. That's all they do right now. And it's pretty cheap. It's pretty, I mean, you're talking a hundred bucks maybe for a whole program, which is pretty solid. Um, again, thank you for listening and join my lives on Tuesday nights.